Okay, guys, let's whip through this mixed counting questions. U D U U two D five, um, which is kind of this a little review of the first two units. So real quick here, free distribution. This is not on the test. Just wanted to go over this. Here, this is saying. Let me just show you what, how to do this example here. You have eight, uh, four kids, and eight Oreos. And the question here is, how many ways can you? give eight Oreos to four kids. And where this is different than other questions we've done is there's no limitation on how many each kid can have. So so one kid can get all eight, one kid can get six, one kid can get two, you can have five, two, one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's so many different combinations. So the way this works is a little bit different here. The objects here, this is your K and this is your R. So the Oreos are your K and R are the distinct things that you're giving that are getting getting the Oreos. And what you do here is you go eight plus four minus one, choose K, which is eight. So that's what 11 C8 or how I like this. Okay, so that's how that works. Not on your chest, just something that I thought you might be interested in. How many words can be formed by these letters here? Just five factorial. Um, this one here is six letters, but there's a repetition of the O's. So you need to divide by two factor row. If the constants, I think I made a mistake here. This should be four. So if the constants stay where they are and the vowels stay where they are, let's do the constants. Three factorial ways to line up the three constants. There are three vowels, and you're going to line them up in three factorial ways. But you have two O's, so you have to divide that by two factor. Okay, and that's question three. Question four, 12 different colored flowers. You're going to take eight. How can this happen? You're going to go 12, 8, or sorry, 12, C, 8. This is my old school way of writing it. And calculate that. How many bouquets of four can be made? Same thing. And the point of this is when you expand these, you're going to have, in both cases, this. Vice versa, you might have the 8 and the 4. And the point is when you make a group of 8, you're also kind of making a group of 4 um, at the same time. Because you have the haves and the have-nots. Does eight go here, four go there, and it's the same as making four go there and eight go there. Okay, 23 different shirts. How many ways can you do that in groups, multiple groups? Okay, that's like this. Don't worry about this question on a test. I'm not going to ask multiple groups, but very simple. You just put the group sizes down here um, as a factorial. Okay, and then sort that out. Um... You're going right six times. I should have said less than six. And up five times. So in total, you're, it's, this question like this is like a word question with 11 letters. Six of which are similar and five of which are similar. Okay, six people are sitting in a row. Bill must sit first. Bill goes here. And you have to line up the five factorial people. Bill must sit at one of the middle spots. So they're in the middle spots. So Bill is here or here. So we're going to put Bill in one of these spots. So let's say we put him here. There are five factorial ways. One, two, three, four, five factorial ways to line everyone else up. If we put him here, it's the same thing. So you can add those together. Or you could say, let's multiply by two. Same thing. Five factorial plus five factorial. Bill and Jill must sit together. We've done this a bunch of times now. You put them together in two factorial ways. Then they're a single entity, so you line up the five things. Bill must not sit beside Jill. Best way to do that is to get the answer from A and subtract the answer from D. Uh, and if we sit in a circle, you take the six and you subtract one, which is five factorial. Okay, and finally, eight toppings for pizza. You're gonna choose three. You're gonna choose up to two. So if up to two means two. Oh, I messed this up. Eight and three. 8 and 2, it also means 1, it also means 0. Okay, in pizza, the 0 is okay. You can't choose pepperoni, but must choose 4 toppings. So this one, if you can't choose pepperoni, you're down to 7 toppings, of which you must choose 4. Again, these are C questions, not P, because order doesn't matter. And no restrictions to the number of toppings. What you're going to do, that's 2 to the end, which is 2 to the 8 in this case. And you ask yourself, do I subtract 1 or not? Yes or no? Is the empty set a pizza? Is no, no topping except for cheese a pizza? The answer is yes, so just leave it as this. Make up your own question below. And yeah, that's it. Okay, hope that went all right. Uh, take care.